McLean is back. In the next half hour, you'll meet the cast of Die Hard with a Vengeance. Bruce Willis, Jeremy Irons, and Samuel L. Jackson. We'll also look at the Die Hard series. The stunts. The special effects. And meet director John McTiernan. Bruce and I had talked about doing another one many times. Are you ready to do it? Let's go. I've always made the choice to play him as a, a guy, first of all, who doesn't want to be doing what he has to do in these films. Our big challenge was to really come up with a format that would break the rules. Die Hard 3 is ostensibly about a guy by the name of Simon who comes to town supposedly to exact revenge. Simon's just blowing up a, a fashionable store in downtown New York. We're gonna go! I'm not exactly sure who he is. He identifies himself as Simon. And he says, I'm gonna play Simon Says, with Lieutenant McLean. What is all this about, huh? If we don't do what this guy says, he's gonna blow up another public well, place. why me? What does it got to do with me? I have no idea. He just said it had to be you. He sets out certain tasks for me to accomplish. John McLean is put into a situation where he's really in jeopardy. You got about 10 seconds before those guys see you. When they do, they will kill you, you understand? You are about to have a very bad day. And Zeus bails him out. Get out, come on, come on, get out of here! Get out! Come on, get up! Back up, I mean it! I don't want to, but I will, you know I will! Stay! Simon tells the police that since I wanted to get involved, I now have to remain with him while he chases these bombs all over the city. Who are you? Somebody I sent up? What'd you do? Shoplifting, purse snatching, cross-dressing, what? He has us running around all over the city trying to solve these things. Where the hell are you going, McLean? One of the things that attracts me about Simon is that you don't know you spend the movie finding out what makes him tick, what he's about. And you are in the flower business, Mr. Van der Flug. Flüge. Pardon? Flüge. Van der Flüge. Rhymes with tulips, which coincidentally is what I say. Ah, I see. McLean is also trying to make, to find out what makes him tick, why he's doing what he's doing. So he is not only keeping a jump ahead of the audience, he's keeping a jump ahead of the hero. Okay. Back down action. And action. And Jeremy Irons, I mean, we were so pleased to get him on this picture. And uh, he's, he's a great bad guy. Oh, I think we'd go straight to the withdrawal. Danke, Barry. Well, Simon says, go to 72nd Street, and if you don't, this will be your punishment or penalty. Now, there's a significant amount of explosive. There's a trash receptacle next to you. Try to run, and it goes up now. Nobody's gonna run, but I got 100 people out here. He sets up these very strange and witty kinds of riddles for us to solve, or else a bomb will go off. Ask yourself this question. What is 21 out of 42? He's just playing a game with John McClane. <laughs> Hook, line. Sam is just wonderful in this film. One of the things I want to point out today is this special action pocket that we have right here. You know, I don't have anything in there right now, but you can put a gun, 
Sam's used a knife earlier in the picture that came out of that special action pocket. He brings an honesty to the part and a very, very streetwise, street smart sense to it. You all right? Yeah. Stay back, stay back. This is actually the third film that I've been in with Bruce, but the first time we've actually been on screen together. God damn it, if your brother was a crackhead, his life was over already. He hated drugs. He had a family, a business. He's the squarest guy you ever met. Well, what the hell is he doing in a crack house? He's trying to take me home. He chose in this in this incarnation of John McClane's life to to set a few more obstacles for him. Frankly, John, you have been. Hey, Walter, how about you mind your fucking business about Holly, huh? His life is not the rosy family picture we you know you might have thought it that it would evolve to. Even in a dilapidated state, he's better than any cop he has because he's willing to take a risk. <laughs> This is a really bad idea. He bends the rules a little bit. He's, he's a maverick. He's taking the scenic route. I think the Die Hard series has really uh, built its audience because people like to root for the underdogs. Welcome to the party, pal! He's like the guy who, in the ninth round, you knock down again, and on count number seven, he gets up. I think the great thing about McLean is he's a blue-collar, sort of an average Joe. Let me tell you something. I grew up eating macaroni and cheese seven nights a week, just like you, my man. First of all, I ain't your man, and we ain't nothing alike. And we ain't never eat no macaroni and cheese. I think the really interesting thing about all three of these films is there's always um, real a real emotional heart to it set against this very large canvas of action. Oh, shit! We've always constructed it so he doesn't have any choice, that he has to jump off the building. in the window on a hose. <laughs> Jump on the wing of an airplane. The audience buys into that, and they say, they say, okay, that's what I would do. Hey, Mark! And action cars, action cars! For fans of the series, Die Hard with a Vengeance offers a unique look at New York City as the setting for international terrorism and filmmaking on a grand scale. I always thought it was a very novel idea to, to put this guy back in his in his home turf and then mix up all the you know pieces on the board and say it's not what you thought. The best way south is not 9th Avenue, it's through the park. Oh dear. New York is one of the stars of this movie. It's a city who realize they make money from making movies, therefore allow you to make movies and really facilitate the operation. And we did some stuff down in Wall Street, which we closed off, I think, about two weeks. On action, all the cars and stunt cars go. And cut, cut. We made a deal with the locals to hold down the gunfire while we were rolling. I'm not kidding. Oh, it's a madhouse, all right. It's a complete madhouse. Ninety percent of it was on the street, so every day we had seven or eight thousand people out there who wanted to come out and see what we were doing and come out and watch our little circus. There are all kinds of elements, and there are people blowing their horns, you know, that, you know, when the traffic is stacked up, stacked up, stacked up, and then when they get released and come by, it's like, Bruce, hey, Bruce, hey, Bruce, hey, we love you, Bruce, we love you, Bruce. It's a big playground, New York. Just give you Hi, how are you? 
true. Yes. It's just going down, cargo doing stuff, cargo. It's really good to have John McTiernan back as well in the helm. He's a great director. All right, should we make an attempt to yeah. I'd like to show John. I love John. John is one of the main reasons I did the movie. Die Hard 1 in, in this film, too, Die Hard with a Vengeance. He shoots the film in his head first, so he knows what he wants. He, he's already seen it in his mind. He's doing it, but he's not really doing it, which gets you more pissed off. And then I'm going to have him come down handheld right here. You have someone who is one of the creators of the genre, who uh, understands action film. Ah. This movie looks completely different than, than the original Die Hard. There's a lot more camera movement. Oh, He's responsible for building that suspense and taking you on that roller coaster of ups and downs through the films. Oh, 